stationary live bait retrieval system. Built into a five gallon bucket lid design is a universal system featuring a basket, a pole ring, and a pole rod. With the bait in the basket, you simply unclasp the secondary lid, pull the rod, set it up on the lip, reach in, and grab your bait. The design allows bait to be collected and corralled at the bottom of the ring and brought up above the surface of the water so that you're not fishing around to try to grab a single bait. Some of the additional accessories that we have built into the lid design are holster snell lines, hooks, extra bobbers. You have your accessory clips and air hose for your aerator. This model comes with a Flambo Portable Aerator 1. It also has your rod holder area. So you can set the rod in and fish straight off the bucket. And then you have additional accessory clips all around the perimeter of the lid. For those of you fishing at night, Glow stick comes in handy, break the glow stick, there's actually a recessed area with clips that click the glow stick right in, lights the bait in the bucket up. The whole design was to make fishing with live bait as simple, easy, and hassle-free as possible. One of the best features of this design allows you to remove the entire lid, net, live bait and all, dump the water, Refresh, place everything back in, reset. Changing out the water when you're fishing with live bait allows them to live longer, keeps them healthier and fresh for a long day on the water. Simple, easy, hassle-free live bait retrieval system. The bait butler from Flambeau. It's critical for a successful day on the water. Whether you're fishing with live bait like domestic shiners, minnows, crabs, mullet, shrimp, whatever it may be, this Engel Live Bait Cooler is gonna keep them healthy, keep them strong, and there's several reasons why. And let me show you some of the key advantages to this cooler above all the rest. Number one, marine grade insulated cooler right here. So this is gonna keep your water cool or warm, depending on where you're fishing. If you're ice fishing up in the north and you wanna keep your water from freezing, this is gonna help that. If you're down in South Florida like we are now, we wanna keep this water good and cool, this is gonna help that. So a nice insulated bait cooler is key. Now there's several features inside here. Number one, a very nice, nicely sealed lid right here with nice latches, which is key to keeping the water in here properly. So you're not gonna have spillage in your car traveling back and forth. So here's what's new with this bait cooler versus version one. This one has a, a removable net, okay? And that net fits perfectly down in there. So that, what's that gonna do? That's gonna allow you to get your bait out of here stress-free. It's also going to allow you to change out your bait when it's time to start over. So you don't have to dump out all your water. If you have some dead fish in there or you finished you know, your day, get some scales, you want to dump out the scales but not lose your water, that net's going to come in super, super handy. Now, another thing that's really, really cool for this, for this version is that they put the air hose on top. Check that out. Okay? And the reason for that is now you can fill this cooler all the way to the top with water because the seal is going to hold it in and the water is not going to come out of that. Okay, so that's a really big advantage. Now, what is this for? This is for the air pump right here. So basically we have a nice battery operated air pump. The neat thing about the battery operated air pump is that it runs on D batteries or it comes with a 12 volt cigarette plug that you can put into your accessory in your vehicle or in your boat. And what is this hole for? This hole right here is so if you're not using the the air, you can plug this hole up and you're not going to get spillage in your vehicle as you're traveling back and forth, you know, with this cooler, this light bait cooler. So, in this bait cooler, Angle has included a two-speed pump. Now, what's neat about this pump, it runs on D batteries. It also has a 12-volt accessory switch. So, if you want to plug it in your car, plug it in your boat, you're going to run power all day long. That works great. And you can also buy an optional 120-volt power source. So, if you want to keep bait for an extended period of time, you're good to go with that. So that's a really cool thing. So there's so many neat things about this cooler, but from the latches from, to the seal, to the strap itself, I mean, this cooler is perfect for those people that need a lot of bait. more food. fish than half dead ones. That's why the bait care experts at Frayville have developed a better bait cooler, a new Magnum bait station. 
The Magnum bait station features a heavy-duty injection molded base with one full inch of commercial grade insulation to maintain optimal water temperature. And its two-speed aeration system is built right into the cover of the unit, so it's protected and out of the way. And you can power it with a couple D-size batteries or with the included 12-volt plug. Inside, there's an integrated net that makes it easy to access stored baits. And its rust-proof composite latches are strong and durable, and a sturdy handle and shoulder strap make the unit easy to carry. Available in two sizes, 13 quart and spacious bring this home for the first time, there's a little bit of setup you have to do to put this thing into action. So when you get this and get it home, you're going to get three things that come with the Magna Bait Station. You get a heavy duty strap, which we've already got attached here. That's pretty straightforward in how to do that. You also get the aerator hose with the stone, and you get a 12 volt adapter that works with the aerator itself. So this comes with the unit, and today we're gonna to talk about getting the aerator set up and ready to work. The aerator works off 12 volt, this adapter. It works off two D batteries, and you can also buy a secondary adapter to make it work off 110 volt. But we're just going to talk about the battery placement and getting the aerator set up. So I've got a couple D batteries here, and when you get this home for the first time, you're going to open this up. The aerator is built into the lid, and it's attached with two thumb screws in the bottom of the lid. So we're going to take these out. It takes just a second because they are long. We want to make sure that, that as this is riding in your boat, maybe it's in the back of your car, that there's no way that this is going to um, vibrate loose so these thumb screws maybe are, uh, are going to come loose for you. So they're really long, you'll see that they go all the way through the aerator, they hold the lid on, there's an o-ring seal inside of that, and it keeps everything secure. So the aerator comes off, it's really easy to access at this point, you can just lift this off, you can see the waterproof o-ring is built right into that, and then the 2D batteries go into the inside the aerator itself. They're marked on which way they go. So um, even though uh, you know it should be pretty straightforward, we just make it that much easier for you. The batteries snap right in, and you can test this right now to make sure that the aerator is functioning. It's a two-speed aerator. It's got low and high, and it's ready to go. And while we're looking at it here, this is also the adapter for the 12-volt accessory that comes with it. So we're ready to go with this. We can put this lid back on. All right, so get this back on there. Um, now you'll see the, uh, the adapter for the aerator itself. There's only one hose connection inside the lid for this to go through. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the aerator, you're going to thread this through the lid itself and make sure we go through the right way. If, on the back side of this, as you push it through, there's a, a yellow seal that goes on that. And when you push that through, sometimes that will pop off the very first time. You want to make sure you put that over the aerator hose and that is what's going to give you a nice seal as it goes through it. The aerator then can be attached, it. the hose just slides right on, and then the little yellow seal pushes back down into the lid, the aerator slides on, and you can reattach it with the two thumb screws. These thread right in, again, you want to make sure you get these locked all the way in, tighten those completely up so we're ready to go. No tools required for any of this, so that makes it nice and easy. Yeah. And then to make sure the aerator hose, one, one tip for everybody out there is as this runs through, this keeps the hose completely out of harm's way. There's no hose hanging outside of your aerator itself. The bait station is all self-contained. There's no problem with pieces getting rattled off, the hose getting caught on anything. But what you do want to make sure is the hose doesn't get kinked and pinched in the lid when you're opening and closing it and accessing your bait. So to make that easier for you, just notice this little uh, molded in piece. We push the hose just around the outside of that and into this uh, little groove built into the lid. So you can adjust this based on using the net and there's a built in internal bait net. And we're gonna just make sure that that is in there nice and snug. The aerator is now dropped into the cooler itself and you can just double check and make sure that there's no chance that this is hanging out with too much loop and might get caught in the lid. But it falls right in there, the lid can now be closed and ready to go, and the bait station turned on, and you're ready to go. This is designed to hold minnows for up to three days. The uh, batteries, a new set of D batteries, should last you about 72 hours. Keeps your bait uh, at the correct temperature, maintains it whether it's very cold outside or very hot outside, and you know this is also very watertight. 
It's not completely waterproof because obviously if you're pushing air in, some air has to escape. There's a vent built in underneath this aerator that allows a slight amount of air to escape. So if you turn this completely upside down, it's not waterproof. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to hit the like button below. And if you want to see similar videos in the future, smash that subscribe and make sure to turn the notification bell on. For now, that's all I've got. And in all that you do, we want to help you beat yesterday.